Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to the Design Junkies podcast. Um, if you're one of uh, fuck, the way no they come again. You know what I won't do. You know, you know what I won't do. I won't talk say like the. I won't welcome the old members. Then talk the new niggas. Say make them. You know, make them follow. Make them them send some way no they come. But yeah. you said it so. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I had to come. Today, they are Reagan, he you know, did the whole thing, so. One last try. Laugh. One last try. Let me run. This one be last, last. Okay. Okay. So, which, who the host? <laughs> you know me. You be the host. Me, I'll be the host. I figure I'll be Reagan. Reagan, you always the host. Unless, unless you are signed out to someone else. I'll go host, I'll go host. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. It's all you. So, I give the intro, then I pass on to Reagan. Then we can pass on to the rest of we. All right, cool. Welcome to the Design Junkies podcast. This is probably episode number five or six. Who knows? But yeah, let's see how it's go. And today we'll be talking about side projects and then collaborating with other product designers. So um, we are just going to like talk about one or two things, share our experiences in terms of how we've been able to collaborate with other product designers when it comes to side projects and if we even like find time to work on any side projects at all. So um, without talking plenty, um, let me give the mic to Regan so that Regan will take us away. Regan. All right. So just like Marco said, today we'll be talking about side projects and collaborating with other designers and um, yeah, other people on projects you've been working on the side. Um, where do we even start from? I know. Okay. First of all, we're going to go around the table and hear from everyone the kind of work they do currently as full time or freelancing. If you do full time and you pick side projects, you kind of just add that to it. Um, as well, so I'm just going to start. So personally, I work full time in a company, but then um, from time to time, I kind of take on kind of side projects or freelance projects that would not take so much of my time from my full time work just to kind of um, work on other things and not be focusing on just one particular thing because it becomes boring. Um, because it becomes boring. Sometimes, sometimes to just kind of end extra uh, dollars into your account. That's me personally. We'll get back to maybe how I get a side project and maybe the number of projects we we'll work on in a year. But yeah, we'll go around the table, we'll go with Hansen, um, then from Hansen, someone will pick up. If you don't do side projects or freelance, you tell us, then we'll go to Michael. Okay, so I'm working full time. And yeah, sometimes I do take on side projects. But yeah, like you said, you have to make sure that the side projects you take doesn't really eat into the time of your full full time role. So yeah, I yeah, I do take on some side projects. I do collaboration sometimes. Some more button. Yeah, so I work full time as well. But then I also have some side projects like this podcast um yeah but i i really do freelance okay so um i also work full-time and um aside of full-time i i'm involved in a couple of side projects right i think i'm even currently working on one with jeffrey as well but then it's been what probably over six months now right then things almost still they top yeah, really, my good quick back moves. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one, if you want a personal, so do everything to work. It's on personal mm. feeling. Mm. Hello, hello. Mm. <laughs> now, yo, Sam, as you talk, say, you know, they do freelance. Is there any reason why you don't do freelance projects? I mean, yeah, there is a reason. So I started out my career as a freelancer. I was doing a lot of freelance works, but then I realized it was just too stressful. And it, it wasn't really for me, like the whole point of having to like negotiate to get the right amount and that whole back and forth and having to like do revisions after like the work is done. And then they come back asking for like countless revisions. At that time, I did not know how to handle it as compared to now. Now I think I have a very good understanding 
of how to go about these things. So I just decided to stop freelance and focus on, it was just about the time when I was switching into UX. At that time I was a web, web, website designer. So it was just around the time that I was switching to UX. So I decided to stop everything and just focus on US, uh, UX, build my skills in there. And then I got a full-time role. And then, yeah, I just wasn't really into um, freelancing. But then I still do it. But then this time I like, I say no to a lot of projects. So, I mean, the slightest red flag. Yeah, I'll just say no. Because I, I know I've seen this movie play out countless times. So I won't just, I just won't stress myself and try and go into it. And then, yeah, the, the same story plays out. So now, yeah, I figured out I have other means of making and uh, extra income. That's, I mean, people who do freelance are mainly looking for. So that's what I focus on now. So I, I really do freelance. I do, I think in a year I can do just about like one or two. But yeah, I, I, I bounce a lot of projects. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And with bouncing at the back, we we day here, we we they do freelance. <laughs> so we come and take you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now I think someone mentioned something that um, is was quite interesting. When I asked about the whole side project and freelance thing, he mentioned that he's working one one side project is this podcasting, which means it's not necessarily um has to be a design project. So, so sometimes there are kind of other projects you are maybe working on. It could be, uh, it could be something other than design. But yeah, I, I liked the answer. Now, the next question I'm going to ask is what um, what do you look at to kind of um, accept a freelance project or a side gig? So assuming maybe you have an eight-hour work day, that's maybe let's say nine to five, even if it's remote, you're supposed to deliver. If you have an incoming project, that's a side project. What do you look at? Okay, say, okay, I'm going to work on this project and say, okay, no, this is a red flag. I'm not going to accept that. And I'm sure some will be able to throw light, more light on that side in terms of the whole red flag and stuff. But yeah, Henson, how do you go about that? Yeah, so I just cross check with what I'm doing currently. So let's say my full time group, if I'm currently working on stuff that I feel like I can't really take on any projects at the moment because sometimes you you have like a lot of stuff to work on and sometimes you just need to rest just to recover and work the next day so sometimes i look at that if i can actually work outside those hours i can then i take it on and also i look at the size of the project if it's really big and maybe i need to work on it for let's say two months three months there's a high chance I might not take it. Okay. And even if I'll consider that, then that means you are compensating me like with a really good offer. That will make me consider doing that. But most of the time, it's just the short ones, the ones that have like a shorter time span. I look at that. I also look at the compensation they, they need. So I look at the compensation. Currently, if you come with shares, I don't will take. I, I know they hear shares. You give me the money. Me, the money, they need me. So if you know if you pay the liquid now, the money now, I know go do. Right? That's where I did. You know, sometimes there's a time in your life where some things just know the work give you. And right now, I'm at that point where if you they come with projects like this, I didn't hear, like, Maybe it'll be the money waiting. In. If you go fee pay a fine, I will work on them. If not, then we move. Because I'm I'm also working on a startup. Like we are building everything from scratch. And I can't afford to take on another startup again that's building from scratch. Or probably need someone to build from scratch. So if you are bringing me that offer, then the compensation really needs to make sense in the fact that, oh, okay, this time are they pushing or this time are they sacrifice this be the money i they get from mom and i will be okay with that but if it doesn't really make sense to me then yo charlie i mean we for prioritize our rest right so if let's say i used to i'm um, sleeping let's say eight hours or nine hours and i have to sacrifice let's say two hours or three hours of that the money you they take give me if it makes sense so that at least when I'm sleeping six, um, six hours, I will not say, oh, 
it didn't make sense. If, if not, they are witchy. I will left. Girl. I like the chest pass. We'll come and talk about that. Thing. People, they think that the life people disease were. So for me, right, um, for m- majority of last year, I didn't take on any freelance work because um, I spent most of last year working 80 hours a week. So I didn't, plus, aside that too, I was involved in other um, activities as well. So I didn't even have time for myself. I didn't have time to take on another project, right? But then at least now where um, I have kind of let go of some of the things that I was working on. So now if I'm in the space to take on freelance projects, I'm trying to be more intentional about it in the sense that um, the project has to be something that I'm interested in something that I think will be fun to work on and um, also something that like when I put it out there and then I see people using it, I'll be happy plus money to the needed above. So yeah, most importantly, I think the money, just just like what Jeff said, because right now that not everything is exciting, you understand? So if I'm going to have to take it on, I'll, ha- I'll need some form of encouragement with the encouragement for make sense in terms of the money bit, because Charlie, we all we know say money they need right now. You understand? So um, if it's not something I'm interested in, then the money would have to be big. If it's something I'm interested in, then fine. We can see how we can structure one or two things here and there to make it work. Sam, do you have anything to add on that? I mean, you didn't mention that right now they you know, really do that. But before, what do you, what do you look at? What what is a red flag to you when maybe someone comes to talk about a side project they want you to kind of collaborate on? I mean, before, before when I was in freelance, I, I didn't I wasn't looking at red flags. That's why I, I then I take chuck my ass all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I, I I don't like overlook the slightest red flags, right? So some of the red flags I look like at is when you come to me and you don't have a clear goal of what you want to do. Because then if you don't know what you want to do, it's difficult for me to bill you. Because then I might bill you for a certain, how I understand it. I mean, after all the discussions, I might bill you for how I understand it. And then once the project starts, you start adding in, like the, the scope creep, right? You start adding in these things that you think are nice, you've seen somewhere and all that, right? So, um. And that's one of the, the the first things that I look at, and yeah, I think really that's that's how it starts. So if you come to me and you don't really have a good understanding of what you are looking for, that's that's where it will probably end. If you probably understand what you are looking for, and then I'll get on like a fifteen minute call with you. Like nothing more, nothing. Uh, it's, it's never going to go past fifteen minutes. So within 15 minutes, you have to explain. I mean, I'll get on a call with you. You, If you have your team, you, you can jump on a call. And that's like the first call. Run me through everything you need to do. i ask you all the questions and ask you all the requests, all the things that, uh, like I'll inform you of all the things that I'll probably need if you don't have them. So you go prep them. I remember <laughs> this recent project for um, this whiskey and concert thing, you know, you know so, so. Yeah, I was, I was doing project for the organizers um yeah so you just jump on a call with them get them to understand what will go into it like my availabilities and everything and then once i get like a fair understanding of what you want then i give you the pricing so how you react towards the pricing will determine if you continue or not yeah so yeah i think it's the essential the red flags it's i just recognize and like i just see it once it happens it's not like it's something because I don't do freelance, I don't have it in mind. But but once I'm speaking to you and you start showing some symptoms, it just brings me like PTSD of things that I've gone through in the past. I like nah, I'm not I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Right? Because from how the person is speaking, you will know whether the person will be difficult or not. Whether the person will be disturbing you with like new features that were not planned earlier or not. So yeah, I, I think for me that's that's really it. Yeah. So um, some. Has there been a time where maybe somebody comes to you with a project, right? The person has an idea of what they want, but they don't necessarily have a clear idea, right? Has there been a time where you've jumped on the call with them to actually try to refine and then come up with a scope for 
like the project before? Has there been a time like that? When you say clear idea, what exactly do you mean? So um, maybe the person knows that, okay, I want to build a fintech app that helps people maybe track their finances, right? Maybe like that's just the concept that they have in mind, but they don't necessarily have everything laid out. Right, so then you'd have to jump on a call to actually help them flesh out the idea just so you can get a proper sense of the scope and how to charge them. Yeah, so so this is one of the things I learned, right? So you jump on a call with them to flesh the idea, that's also part of the work, right? So the thing you said, they want to... What what, what was the prompt you gave, the, the thing you said? So, um, FinTech up to help people track their finances. So that's like very... Is vague the right word? That's like very vague. You, I mean, since it's your idea, at least you should have thought about it. That's the impression I'm having. You should have thought about it to know, okay, this is what you want to do. And maybe these are the the list of features that I want to go into this. So you, cause you just, can't just come to me and say you want um, a printer that helps people track their ideas. Fine, I'll have questions to ask. And then we can go on and have discussions. But that is going to be, at least for my process, that's going to be longer than 15 minutes. And bear in mind, me, I have no, like, I'm typically not interested in these freelance, unless, again, that was what I was going to say, unless, like, it's as an, like a, an actual company that you're starting to build, right? So it's not like a freelance thing, like, oh, Tali, I didn't need websites, so come and do it for me, then I pay you off, then you go. But unless it's like an actual startup you're trying to build, then I look at what you are saying, you explain it to me, then I, I think it's exciting, then I can jump on it for you. And then we have that discussion because that I know that I'm not doing it for the money. I really mean money has never motivated me to do anything. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I know contrary to what Michael and Jeffrey said, right. Cause I know that money is going to finish, right. It's, it's not going to last forever. So if it's uh, like a project that has the potential, if I listen to that, I think it's exciting. It has the potential of like maybe in the next five years. Again, that's me that, again. In the next five years, it has potential of like maybe blowing up or whatever and becoming big. That is what I'm looking at, right? So I can sacrifice my time or like my two hours, even if it's two hours a week, Seth, I can sacrifice that time and work on that for you. But if it's freelance, like you're just coming to me like Charlie one time, I didn't need the website, do this for me. Then you, you, you don't understand what you need to do and you want me my limited time to like work, work with you and do other things. That's, I have to charge you for it. I'm sorry. But that is also part of the work. Yeah, that's also part of it. And that is what I don't want to do. Right? Because a lot of these people, I mean, it's just, I realize I, I, I don't have the, the patience for that thing. Right? And that's why freelancing is not my thing. I've just agreed, accepted the fact that it's not my thing. Right? So typically, even if I'm going to do freelance, it's typically when like, maybe my engineering friends, they have some projects, they've spoken with a person and everything, and they need design. Then I can just speak with the engineers. Okay, this is what they need to do, blah, blah, blah. Then I just work on a design and then ship it over to them. Then they can deal with the people. And I know, okay, if there's a cut, then they just share it with me, right? It's not like I'm dealing with them directly, like me, this, the client, this, and then we are speaking. Because I'm not really interested in freelancing. If they can be interested in more like startup, uh, building a startup and all that. So if you come to me with that, then I can see with you and we are, we are talking together, I'm refining the idea, uh, figuring out the problem, if it's actually the right problem you are solving, if we can like, pivot to something else and whatnot. That if it's like a freelance one-time thing, you know, you are just paying me like a small amount of probably what you are going to make. And so anything that I'm going to do that has to do with my expertise, I have to charge you for it. So that's why I said within the 15 minutes, if you come to me the first time and you say, okay, you want a website that does A, B, and C. I'm like, okay, I get what you mean. Cool, we can jump on like a 15 minutes call. Then you can explain to me in detail what exactly you need, then I can ask you the questions I need, right? Do you have this? Do you have that already? Do you have this in place? If you don't, I'll need A, B, and C. So you, can you get that? Like, for example, a website, do you have like the content already? Do you have the imagery? Do you have a clear, like, um, a, a clear understanding of the pages you need, right? So then if you don't have that, I'll ask you to go work with your team, right? To go sort that out, sort out the imagery, sort out everything. And then you come to me and then we, I, I can sort of put all that together. And I mean, the experience, that is my side. So that is my field. So the UX and how the things should, interaction should work, that's my side. But the things you have to provide, you need to sort that out because I don't want to start and then it is delaying. Because then once it's delaying, I'm not being paid and then my time is being wasted, you dig. So that is what I do within the 15 minutes. 
right? So within the 15 minutes, I get to know all that. If I realize you're not serious, and that then or I, I bounce you that. About so the freelance, I'm not there to. I know people do that. Like people, it's like they take the freelance as their job and everything. So like their strategy and all that. That is fine. That is not me. I I don't have the time for that. All right, Charlie, the way it's time to talk. I hope you're not angry. And then <laughs> they can't talk. Bro. They can't talk. Hey, the, you don't, you like, man, Charlie. I don't know. I don't know. But I get some few pointers from what he mentioned, like what he was saying. Um, I mean, I they agree with I they, I they agree with him on the part of you know understanding the project scope. Well, of course, if you don't take care, you'll be able, you you will charge wrongly, and then once you get into, I mean, it has happened to me a couple of times. Once you get into the actual work, then you realize that okay, this people didn't explain the work so well, and maybe. You would have charged maybe this amount, maybe let's say X amount, but because they need a spend, so we're going to charge this amount. So understanding the scope of the AB very, very key from the beginning. And the part where he said, if you watch this guy's video, more Janda, where he's teaching, like he's talking about all this contracting, the part where helping them shape the idea is also part of your job. So if you want to give them 15 minutes of your time just to understand where they are coming from, and then maybe decide on a charge, because if you're going to they would they two hour call how they have shaped their idea and at the end of the day they don't give a project you've wasted your time and your resources you understand so that part also be very 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 important actually like the key things you mentioned so you have to understand the projects could well and then know all the features they added so they know be now then they can't develop i mean they can't start the project and then they can't put all of them into the project now most of these things too you for me to say you they take care of them in terms of the contract maybe what will happen if they add new staff um, if they are doing revisions, you know, going outside the project scope and all that, charging for it and all that. But yeah, Sam, thank you very much for your angry um, session. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey, Je Jeffrey, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, then I they can't talk on the part of like scoping out, right? What if I take on a project and it's not really clear? What I usually do is to avoid them, um, what is it? Scope creep, right? What I usually do is, in the contract, right, I state the scope that probably I understood or got from the combo we had. I state them clearly and also let them know if I do anything outside this particular scope, I'll charge you for that. So no matter how you come to me, if you come to me with not so clear scope that projects and per the combo we have, right, this be what we, we decide on going. I just list them out plus the contract. So if you sign the contract, that this be the scope that they do. So later on, if you come on and you tell me, oh, but like for others, I will tell you say, the scope, you know, you know the inside. So if I will do this one other, I for charge you. you get, that's me, my way of like clearing this issue of uh, people saying that like you don't really have the school cleared out you don't really understand it i mean i'll just craft the contract on based on what i understood yeah if anything you will come there then i will charge you correct correct so that that's like the most important part because for me to say the cater for all those, those loopholes so me normally the beginning of the contract are the states like just like you said Okay, this is the things we are providing. If I send you the contract where you think say those are other things, then add the ones that you think were not added and then make sure. And also, like I mentioned earlier, the revision parts, because you realize that some people, I see, you will shock you. Me at the beginning, say, oh, okay, yeah, this was those mistakes. You finish the project and then you do like 20 billion revisions and they are not even charging for them. So putting those kind of things in place, okay, you get two free revisions after maybe the project has ended. Maybe I saw a video recently where the guy was saying maybe. For the first two weeks, whatever revision they bring is free. After that, if they bring any revision after two weeks, or maybe end, end the project after two weeks, any revision they bring can be a you the charge form. So anyone that works best for you, you have to just make sure say you delay and what in your contract to avoid any um confusion. Yeah, Michael, what's up? Oh, yeah, then I just need to talk say we I mean we talk about freelance, right? But then the side projects to just like some mentioned in the beginning, this particular podcast be an example of um side projects right so more no they focus too much on freelance right so maybe if you get some thing for somewhere you then your party they work on right like how you put it go about um how you even they decide so okay cool make i just block some time out pick this thing then make me then somebody work on this is that that's it i read about like 
then you tie them back into how you even define time with your nine to five work, then your church activities, your relationship, then everything you about like life in general. I think we went that route because of someone in this thing, you know, the whole scope thing. But yeah, let's let's come back to the relationship you talk now. Also, <laughs> yeah, I read some of it there in relationship and things now. So also, uh, yeah, if you hey, spend time with your sweet one here and there, go to some resort, drive around town, you know, mention hey. your name. Why not mention your name? <laughs> <laughs> Who you they talk? No? I talk about you, Jeffrey. Now who again? Or not the end, uh, tell them, <laughs> tell them, tell them. If I tell them, I love sweet. Yeah, it's okay. I beg you, bro. I hey, beg you, bro. We just put about the whole um, annual red flag thing, but just like you said. We are talking about whole um, side project and collaboration, so not just necessarily just freelance, right? So now, um, there was this particular thing I wanted to touch on, right? Most of the time, people are like, oh, I'm so occupied, I'm not going to take on side projects, or maybe I'm not going to work on side gigs, um, or maybe start other things. But the one thing I realized is if you plan your time well, and then you learn how to dedicate certain things, you'll be able to work on a lot of stuff. So personally, let me like this, right? Uh, well, because normally I'm occupied with other things. I pick on the freelance projects or whatever it is, and then look for people to kind of maybe do them and then just oversee whatever they are doing. And at the end of the day, give them percentage of the total um, money. So you don't have to necessarily be free, 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 free to kind of pick on um, side projects. I just wanted to add um, that on the side. Now, to get into management and stuff, how do you manage... Your time if you have a side project maybe let's say you've spoken to the client you have you say okay will they do this will they do that um how do you manage that with your full-time work if there's also a side project that you are working on like this whole podcasting like i mean we are four years how do we um go about it right that one i'm gonna like make some talk about that because he's doing more of the management stuff so some in terms of managing your full-time work or whatever you are doing with this whole podcasting we are doing you know Creating content for social medias, managing the three other stubborn boys, and with the how, how you they go about them? <laughs> how are they manage my time? That be like the main question, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So, this I'm not sure if I, I can. I've really thought about this to answer it, but again, me is I, I feel like I personally feel like we have a lot of time on our hands, right? Like we sleep for eight hours, eight hours. If you know, we all we already sleep eight hours. Me, I had to sleep like four hours, right? So, well, well, not every day, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we are supposed to sleep for eight hours, right? And then we work full time, we are supposed to work for like eight hours, nine to five, eight hours. So that's 16 hours. We still have eight hours left in 24 hours, right? I still I feel like that's a lot of time for anyone to do anything. I, I well. To the short answer is I don't, I personally don't manage my time. Like I don't have like any to-do list of, okay, I have to do this, this, this time. I have to do this, this time. I mean, I tried it. I mean, then things are not to work for me. That'd be why I mean, I'm very cautious of, I keep saying like, be, be cautious of who you take advice from, be cautious of who you listen to online, like do this, do that. I mean, then things are not to work for me. I mean, I just do what I need to do. Right. So you, I mean, the eight hours you are supposed to sleep. A lot of people don't sleep eight hours. Some sleep like four, five, maybe six, right? So that's like two hours extra. And the full time job, let's be honest, we we you know we we don't work full time. The eight hours, like we don't exhaust it, right? If you have work to do, like two to five hours, you can finish the work. Five hours is a lot. Let's be let's be very realistic. Yeah, five hours is a lot. Yeah, yeah, me like this. I mean, me. If anyone who's listening to us work with me, one thing you know is, I mean, I'm very fast with my work because I'm very good. With, I'm very good with what I do. I don't like have a a, a simple answer to tell you like this is the cheat code you have to follow it me i just realized i have a lot of time on my hands so sometimes i feel like i'm not doing enough self right even though like sometimes when you look back you realize you've actually been able to accomplish a lot of things right and still like sometimes i have time to sleep i have time to i mean these are really play video games but yeah sometimes i play video games i record this podcast edit the videos put them out. I work on other projects. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't have a direct answer. I mean, I just do what but I do. You know, sometimes you get up, you get caught up in doing unnecessary stuff, right? Uh, maybe 
Yes, we have a lot of time on our hands, right? But then um, it takes discipline to maybe, let's say, focus on doing what actually matters within a day, right? So, uh, unless of, I mean, you, I know you did be serious guys, so maybe distraction or they come your way, but then are there kind of maybe measures you put in place to kind of just prevent yourself from going off track to do what is not really, am I on mute? Oh, uh, yeah. To do, <laughs> to do, um, like unnecessary things, things that don't really benefit the side projects you're working on or anything, right? So you know how this whole podcast thing, you are kind of maybe um, looking for tools to make our whole process easy, um, thinking of the flow we should go through. You actually, they do a lot when it comes to this thing. That's what I'm asking of. Yeah, fair, fair enough, you don't really plan your day, but I'm sure there are some things that maybe keep you in, in, in um, on your toes, if, if I should, if I should say. I mean, okay, well then, hmm. again, let me, this question is very difficult for me because I, I don't, I don't think too much about these things, but okay, maybe what's one thing about me is that, and I think I've said this in the past on this podcast, like when something is very important to me, I make sure it's like, it gets done. All right. So for example, this podcast thing, I, I like, I legit can't sleep. And, and not like just this podcast, like anything in general that I'm working on, I legit can't sleep if like I know I have to do something. Like if I know I have to edit the snippets and I'm just there, even if it's like, especially like at night time, that shit keeps me up. Right. So I, I, I have to make sure I have, I've done it. So in the morning when I wake up, I have stand up at eight. I wake up, I do my stand up. After 8.30, no, I edit the video. Right. So if I have snippets to do, I edit the snippets for the podcast. If I need to like edit the videos, check the analytics for our ads, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever, I go make sure I check it. If I have to go like tweak the flyers, for example, the YouTube thumbnail, I've been tweaking it. I don't know if you guys noticed. Just because YouTube is very different from everywhere else. So I'm, I'm just experimenting reading to see the best ways. I make sure I do that. And then if I have meetings, I do the meetings. And then again, that's why I talk to like, you don't let people deceive you online. Cause me, I, I feel like I don't do a lot. Yeah. I just watch YouTube videos, Sidemen. I'm a big fan of Sidemen. And then to like, sometimes I don't have anything to do. So whilst I'm doing it, so the videos I've, one thing I've realized is that I just play the videos. I don't really pay attention to them. And I just be lying on my bed and then I'll be thinking. I think that's how I'm most, like I'm very productive. Cause I'm able to think through and map out things that I need to do. And then once I pick up my laptop, like I just execute, right? So I, I just watch YouTube videos and I'm, I'm working on a series for my YouTube channel. I'm calling it Operation Greenback. So it's basically documenting like my, the end to end process of, uh, build, uh, designing an app in a company. That's what I'm working on. So these days I, I record that like from 10 to like midnight or one, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm done. Right. So I do that. And then around one, I just go back to bed, be lying down. And then sometimes I realize, okay, shit, I have to edit this podcast because the timelines are very short. You guys know like the timelines you have to record and release are very short and the editing is a lot of work because I have to edit this audio, put it in the script, edit the video, go through it text by text, like literally like every single text, delete the text that are not necessary. there, fill out words, the arm and things you guys, we already talking delete all those things, export it, make sure it works, bring it back, like do all that editing within like less than a week because I have to do the snippets and like it's, it's basically a lot of work. So I do that and I sleep like around 3 a.m. And then it's, it repeats again. Like I wake up sometimes 7.38, do my stand up and the cycle continues. And I have to learn as well, especially in the morning after my stand up, I learn do the editing, maybe read a book. That's what I'm trying to do again because I realize I, I don't like reading books. So yeah, I'm reading a book now. Yeah, that's what, what answer your what, question. What book is that? Yeah, it answers my question. What, what book is that? Uh, I'm starting with Still Like an Artist. I realized I had it in my drawer. I never read it, but yeah, I'm just reading it. When you're not maybe I, what we can do is maybe everybody should read and then maybe we can discuss it one time on the podcast. Yeah, I've read it before though, but yeah. Um, I think you had, you had the process in place, right? You have some mental structures in your head inside. Okay, if I do this, and I'm done with this, maybe I should do this. And, and that's what I was asking, right? So people really don't have certain things like just in mind and just 
just lazy about the whole time. Um, um, I know you are more of a management guy. Oh, they will manage your time here because I so dedicated to my relationship. Me, um, I so for no, that's it. So, talk to us. How do you? <laughs> this one, <yeah. laughs> hey, how do you manage your time? Work on side projects. Um, I know for the podcast, you kind of help with the um graphics on the social medias, and also you mentioned that you're working on a side project with Michael Mafayechi, but cool. Also, your freelance gigs you do work on. How do you handle relationships and your time and all that? <laughs> funny, enough, <laughs> funny enough, I always say I go feel manage my time more. Like I don't think said sometimes I have this feeling where I feel like I'm not doing more, like I'm doing less. And it be it be some way because if people, so I really this issue, <laughs> this issue of managing time. Eh? Just to be frank, like me, I know I know be good at it. It might look like I'm actually doing great, but I I really know be somebody that really they manage my time. It's just that I know what to prioritize at every given moment. So it makes it look like oh I have my shit get together. But the way my mind they work or my brain they work, it just uh, more like if something comes up, I know what to do because I've prioritized them already. So if something comes up, I know, okay, I still need to get this done. Okay, if I can't get it done today, can I do it tomorrow? Or can I shift it to maybe next week? Like, that'd be most of the calculations where they go through my head. So with, imagine it with like um, side projects, um, the one with me, then IV, they work on that one. We, we set time to do and say, okay, at this time, every Sunday, we they, we they check up, work on them. One hour, two hours, we go work on them. And the rest is more about, like I said, prioritizing. So I just prioritize myself. If I know I have to get this shit done within this week, I make sure I do it. So if um, anything comes after, or even if I'm lazy about, because sometimes I genuinely lazy about, I can't just help. Like, I know if you help myself, I just did. <laughs> I just did my bet of maybe binge watching Netflix movies. And it doesn't mean I don't get shit done. Most of the time when I'm in that state, it's probably because I know I can get that particular thing done within some few minutes. So sometimes I just take that time to just be there, relax a bit, watch movies. And of it got to a time I was taking a lot of jobs mainly because I thought I could do more. So I was taking a lot of jobs, taking more gigs, and I was I was like bent out eventually, which I realized no, I no be machine like that. Whatever they work on work for me, no make I continue the do one. Because if I think Alu Alu mentioned the best, like he said, if you they follow people, what people they talk online most of the times, like you go do your yeah, you, you go do your yeah. <laughs> So just find what works best for you. No matter how awkward or weird it might be from the usual, I just if it works for you, I just go with it. So me with managing time, I realize it I am mostly good at prioritizing. So when the week when the week starts, like this week for instance, I know what I need to get done within this week. Like as if the chat right there, I know what I'm for do. So if I turn up now. Nah, the ones we are feel say I feel kill them within first two days are the killer. If I kill them, most of the time there are three days left. It be me trying to. If you find me working within like the Thursday, Friday, busily working, then maybe the Monday that you do something pie way. Then it means I have to take them, or probably it's just that work work the workload increase so. Yeah, basically that's it. And I, I really prioritize my rest because of the last year experience. So I really try to prioritize my rest these days. And <laughs> funny enough, I've been diagnosed of stress before. So that why on dice are the toxic are no stress, I see stress, me then stress, we chat before. Have <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just try to work within my limits, what works best for me, if I can fix anything within those time frames. And yeah, relationship-wise, we they need, like I said, although they had that. So if 
if I will get time spent with like my baby, I will do them. If it be family matter to I will do them. Like, cause at the end of the day, you realize relationships they need. You know, be I mean, you go do work, 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 but you still it be people we will come through for you. So if you have a friend, you can just visit, chit chat, play games with. Like, just do them. <laughs> cause what well, this life now, if you can't work, work. It will shock you the people you the work give. If you die right now, they will get someone to replace you. So just find times to prioritize some of your I mean, not most all your relationships because some people there, yeah, you know they need them be vouchers. So yeah, so um hey, I talk vouchers, hey, I say vouchers, then be vouchers. <laughs> So yeah, that be my own. I'm, I I don't want to say I'm good at managing my time, but yeah, I try my best to do prioritize it and do what's needed. So try be like the relationship side there for campus classes. So. You want? Try, I tell you, your man they try for that side. Your man they try for that side. Yeah, if I see pictures on WhatsApp, I make up. Last time I comment on one, then I make up. I like, hey, brother. Anyways, focus, 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 focus. Okay, Two people they deviate from the topic. Yeah, yeah, that boy. I need your so, collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, collaboration we talk quick. On the part, on the part of if you follow social media, you really go do your be social because when when I started my, I mean the career and then coming to social media, plenty of content and all that, the content I was consuming online made me feel actually like people really be organizing things. But then, I mean, even me from time to time, I've made maybe let's say an Instagram reel of me reading a book or maybe working or. Maybe a day in my life, and then when you watch that video, you feel like, oh, this guy got his day planned out. But usually, we don't add the part where maybe things go went sideways or anything. You understand? So, if you follow social media, yeah, like you guys said, you go do your big time. You understand? You need to just focus on what works for you. Try me. I've tried so many um, things. Like I've tried using to um, to like um, how do you call it applications to do plan my day. I've used Notion for to do list before. I've used to do list. I've used Microsoft Stack before. I've used all of them before. Right now, back to my sticky notes and stuff because it didn't work for me. So you just have to make sure say you they figure out what they work for you, what they make your process faster. Because me personally, I can have something I'm supposed to do, and then I it just occurred to me, right? And then the next second, I forgot about it. So I have my sticky notes. There. I just they paste paste them everywhere, you know, and that works for me. What what somebody they maybe they have go work for them or help you manage your time. Somebody they if for scheduling in there well, which. I used to do before, but right now I'm like, I'm just going with the flow. So I wake up, look at the to-do list, um, my sticky notes. Okay, I'm supposed to do this. Start with what is going to be easy and they kind of just take me into the deeper work and all that. So you just have to look at what process they work well for you. You don't have to be so focused on this whole productivity thing and then be like, actually, I for plan my day, I for do this after this, do one hour, this. you just go mess up big time. Because on the social media platform, people know they post everything. They just post the nice part to just create some 15 or 30 seconds video. Michael, um, still on management, uh, managing a side project or relationship styles and then full-time work, or uh, even if it's just six side project I work on, how, how do you jump from time to time? You know, just like him, for instance, you were saying, do you have some processes in place? So far, from what you guys have said, uh, I realize that my own is a little bit different because um, my work structure is very different, right? I go on site, so then um, if I go on site, I can't take naps, like how maybe some get to take naps in between his days, work week and everything, right? So for me, it's very different. So um, plus, I'm also a very forgetful person, so I have to write down the things that I need to write down. Because see, sometimes uh, even the, what's it called? The, the notion doc like this, right? Some of the things that I know that, okay, I'm supposed to like do this, this and this, but then if I don't write it down, it's very easy for me to forget. And then if I do, I have to remember, right? So if I don't like remember instantly, then that one day I do it. So me, every time I have like either a notebook, I think I carry like two or three notebooks with me every day, plus my sticky notes and things, right? So I just use the sticky notes to plan my day. Okay, maybe today, this is what I want to do. And then I'll find time in my day to do that, right? But then sometimes too, my work isn't necessarily very structured. So there are times when maybe I can plan that, okay, I want to do, when I go to the office, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. But then my day will just take a U-turn 
and then I have to focus on something else. So the things that I have, I plan to do today, it means I have to shift them to maybe the next day or something, right? Plus, one of the things that I realized is that I tried this thing where um, when I go to the office, I do everything I have to do. I finish, I come back home. I'll try my best to take a nap. So um, when I take the nap, then I, I'll wake up and do the extra things like tackle the side projects and everything that I need to work on. But then I realized one thing, I couldn't sleep early, right? So, and if I don't sleep early, it means it will affect the time that I wake up. I'll have to wake up late, get to the office a little bit later. That will affect the time that I leave the office and so on, right? So like that thing just threw me off a bit. So now yeah, I'm trying my best not to even like take naps. If I can, maybe I'll just bath, do some one or two things. Then um, if I have to sleep early, I just sleep early and wake up early, right? Yeah. So it don't necessarily be like any, I don't get any giddy form of time management. I just try to make it very flexible because my, there's no structure to my day. Everybody there, or you know, for really um, take advice from somebody on how, because Charlie, you go, like, the, the key word is we say you go do, um, yeah, what? Yeah, sometimes if they, I intentionally decide not to do what I want to do, right, or what I have to do. So maybe it could be that today I said, okay, when I get home, I'm going to work on this side project, but then I realized that. I'm not necessarily in the right space to work on the project. Right? Maybe I feel tired or something. So in that case, I'll decide to switch to whatever it is I want to do, like anything that's outside the project. Because also keep in mind that if I work on this project and then it affects, like maybe I get tired or something, it's going to affect my output for that project. And it's also going to impact my, the next day at work as well. So sometimes it'd be like, intentionally taking some things out, bringing some new things in, then just moving all over the place. But yeah, sometimes, plus, like, I forget if. One more thing to be say, whatever you want to do, right? If you want to do it, you find a time to do it. Because there was, there was a time that I'll go to work, come back home, path, do extra work, sleep, wake up, do extra work again, bath, eat, go to the office, come back, do extra work, learn, then you were like, it was just like that. So yeah, if you say you're not going to find time there now, then it means it's not necessarily too too important to you. Um, I think that's on the side projects and collaboration, like we, everybody said, you don't have to necessarily follow um, the processes we use, right? With this whole time management and maybe how to pick, you just have to look for what works for you, right? Some of these things you have to try them, feel, and then learn from it, you get it. So yeah, I think that'll be it for today's episode. You can follow us on Instagram at the Design Junkies Podcast. You don't have to spell it again. Yes, the design, the the T-H-E design, D-S-G-N, Junkies, J-U-N-K-I-E-S. You can follow, I mean, if you go to our Instagram page, you see our profile there, but then you can follow Michael at underscore IV, Hinson at JDJ, Hinson, Regan at Regan on design, and Mike at the design. So that's it for this episode. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you. And and Mike at the design sound. The wow. inside party can't talk. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Why are they? It. Why are they? <laughs> I'm moving. Oh, they are. Okay, yeah.